Okay, so as we wrap up the week, we did get an update for a news story that we had talked about previously in Newswave, and it has to do with E3 and Nintendo, as reports and rumors were starting to swirl that Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony would essentially be skipping like the main showroom floor for E3, but could technically still have events around it, and... Obviously, that started a lot of conversation online around the idea of E3 even existing if none of the platform holders are going to take part in the event. Well, we had Microsoft who sort of talked about the idea of we're going to be at our own building, our own location close to E3, but we're not going to be part of E3. And now we have Nintendo actually commenting on the situation. I wanted to go over that very quickly here today, so if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like it and subscribe if you're new. Let's head over here. This was to IGN, and they had originally reported, this was Cat Bailey, that Nintendo would be skipping E3. And then we had some other sources and outlets like VGC chime in and say that, uh, oh, the reason Nintendo is skipping E3 is because they don't have anything worthwhile, I'll say, to showcase. Like, they could have some smaller titles, but is it worth the bill, the expense that would come with E3, setting up an entire entire section maybe themed around a game and the millions of dollars it would take just in overall production costs and all these different things, the logistics that go into it. But we can see here from Nintendo, this was in response to IGN's report with a comment saying, we approach our involvement in any event on a case-by-case -case basis and are always considering various ways to engage with our fans. Since this year's E3 show didn't fit our plans, we have made the decision to not participate. However, we have been and continue to be a strong supporter of the ESA and E3. So, essentially alluding to the idea of them not going away from E3 completely, just that this E3 legitimately does not line up with their plans that they have going forward for 2023, and then also the first half of 2024, because... Remember E3, it happens once a year, so basically you can showcase games that are between that E3 and the next, so the first half even of 2024. And if we take a look at Nintendo's current plans, they have an entire release schedule you can look at over on their website. Obviously, we have Metroid Prime Remastered, and we have Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. That actually came out today, uh, but that's the rest of their February, and then into March, we have Bayonetta Origins, into May, we have The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Interesting they don't have Advanced Wars on here, I'm just now realizing that. Um, but then they have uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in May, and Pikmin 4 in July, which is their last current release that they have on their release schedule. So that, towards the end of July there. And then you start thinking, okay, well, what's their holiday title? That may have been something they would have established at E3. So does this mean that Nintendo doesn't have anything really planned around that time to set up the second half of the year and partially the first few months, we'll say, of 2024? Well, the thing about the, the news that we have here now when it comes to Nintendo at E3, the fact them not showing up there with a, an in-person event and showing of some kind... It really doesn't matter much for 95, 96% of us. If you're not going to E3, you're probably not really going to mind if they skip E3 as long as there is some sort of Nintendo Direct around that time. Because the thing with E3 that was very easy to figure out, obviously, you could schedule around that week, is that you would expect events from the big platform holders especially before Sony decided to skip E3 completely then going forward. But at that time period, especially throughout like the PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, I mean, even Switch there, right, for a while where they intersected, you would have all three companies have showcases of some kind along with all the third parties. So you would have something to look forward to, even if you were at home, just kind of observing everything, right? In this case, though, Nintendo skipping E3 does kind of open the possibility for them to set the Direct on their own terms and not have to fit into a certain schedule. It is possible that they just walk right past E3 that week and they don't have a Direct. And uh, I think if there isn't one before then, say in May, and we get there and it just doesn't happen, I, 
I feel like that's going to set off some alarm bells and I don't want to say panic, but definitely concern from a, a lot of Nintendo fans. But here, here's the biggest thing about this. I think it's pretty clear what's going on with Nintendo right now. Sure, they don't have we'll say anything quote-unquote massive or big enough to warrant the expenses of E3, probably because they're pushing towards their next generation device. And we, I think now more than ever, expect that in 2024, especially since The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is lining up to be their their last hurrah, their last really big title for the system, even coming in at $70, which continues to push expectations up for this game overall, which means, yes, Pikmin 4, maybe Metroid Prime 4 for this holiday. There could be a 2D Mario game instead, and the Metroid Prime 4 ends up being that cross-gen game similar to what we saw with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild between the Wii U and the Switch. And I think that'd be really cool for Metroid Prime 4 because it's pretty obvious that Retro Studios, they still got it in the technical department with what they pulled off with Metroid Prime Remastered. So while I'm sure they could get something really good looking out of the Switch, can you imagine what they could do with a potentially more capable Nintendo system, the Switch successor, maybe 4K, better visuals, higher fidelity, frame rate, all of those different things, right? So in this case, for Nintendo, if they are in that position, it kind of does make sense for them to skip E3, although they did show up to an E3 at one point with just a single game with The Legend of Zelda. So, unfortunately, in this case, though, that comes out in May, a month before E3 happens. But there we have it. Nintendo is officially out of E3. Them, Microsoft, and obviously Sony, if that trend continues as we expect, but I still think we're going to see some events. I think we'll see a PlayStation Showcase. We'll see a Nintendo Direct. And Microsoft will have, I'm sure, their own showing as they have talked about just in their building a couple of blocks away from E3. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. You know what? I'm, I am curious what people think about the idea of maybe a softer second half of this year. If it does mean that we go into the first half of 2024 with a new system to look forward to, launch lineup, and a bunch of titles for 2024. Is it worth going potentially five or six months of a very quiet period for Nintendo when it comes to first-party releases? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.